Clan Hunter. Good afternoon. Hi everyone. Okay, welcome to episode three in our sustainable production series. Today we're going to be discussing zero waste pattern cutting. So, firstly, we have to figure out what is zero waste pattern cutting. Well, it's a pattern cutting technique that was developed to reduce pre consumer waste produced by the production process. Now, waste in the fashion industry is predominantly categorized in two areas. Pre-consumer, that is waste that's created through the manufacture of garments, waste before it gets to the consumer, and post-consumer, waste that happens after the user, the wearer, the person who owns the garment has finished, um, has finished with the garment. Now, uh, the difference being that post-consumer is often used clothing or worn clothing, uh, and pre-consumer is often scrap fabric, sometimes called cabbage in the industry because it's, uh, it looks like you know the ca cabbage leaves, um, but is effectively brand new fabric that has been um, kind of cut off through, during the production process and, and disposed of. So on average, about 15% of waste of fabric is wasted in the cutting process, with figures of up to 50% being not uncommon. Now, 15% is actually very efficient. If you think you buy one meter of fabric, um, that's 15 centimeters of fabric being, being wasted. But of course, uh, figures of up to 50% are not uncommon, depending on the garment, depending on how it's made. So you might say for every one meter of fabric you buy, you throw away half of that. Now, from a financial perspective, we're already thinking really kind of crazy things here, right? So if we're saying a 15% um, wastage, depending on your unit of currency, let's you do pounds first, you spend 10 pounds on a meter of fabric and to throw one pound 50 of that in the bin before you even start, um, feels like a lot of waste. It's even more insane if you throw five pounds of that 10 pound uh, in the bin before you even start. So zero waste pattern cutting is a process that uses the entire piece of fabric uh, either through the production of a single garment, multiple garment, or parts of garments. So that means that in um, a single piece of fabric, and we're going to have a look at some in a second, you might find bits of more than one garment placed together, um, which uses the entire piece of fabric, or a single garment that uses the entire piece of fabric, or um, sections of garments. So it doesn't really limit how you produce, it just means you have to think about it in a different way. The idea really isn't new. There is a seminal book called Cut My Coat, um, which is definitely worth looking up if you can find secondhand copies, um, which look at, looks at traditional dress. Zero waste pattern cutting is in part of the idea of traditional dress, dress in really diverse cultures such as First Nations uh, cultures from, oh dear, I haven't, I haven't put the rest of the word in here, from places like the Americas and Polynesia uh, and um, Oceania to Japanese cultures and Scandinavian cultural groups. So if you think the production of fabric, you know, two, you know, three, five, hundred, a thousand years ago, um, was very, very expensive. So um, people wanted to use the entire piece of fabric. This is where you get um, traditional garments, you know, wrapped around the body, such as the kimono or the kilt, often derived from um, the birth of expensive fabric production. So how do we do zero waste pattern cutting? Well, oh. Okay, well, I thought this was going to be an easy answer, but it's not. Each practitioner has their own process. However, the uniting factor is that the understanding that the aesthetics of garments must be fundamentally different to existing styles. That's really, really key, is that you can't create an exact replica of a garment that already exists using zero waste pattern cutting, because by its very nature, the pattern cutting process used in contemporary industrialized fashion is wasteful. So there's no way that you can produce the same thing without wasting. So it's important to, to note that um, zero waste pattern cutting will have an impact on the aesthetic. Now, ideally a positive impact, so it's worth uh, exploring. So why, why, why do we do this? Well, number one, it's financially advantageous, you know, just to be really, really mercenary about it. Um, it actually will save you a lot of money. It means you're buying less fabric overall, theoretically, or you're at least wasting less fabric. You don't have to pay for disposal of fabric, for example. Um, you're creating something that maybe has less steps in it. So uh, as we get later on and we start to look at, say, digital print onto fabric and then cut out, that eliminates the step um, of creating a lay plan or at least a physical lay plan um, and having to um, you know, print that off or plot that off and, and cut out. But also it, it provides, um, as we'll see later, it provides you with a, a bit of an edge. It is ex 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 sorry, aesthetically innovative. 
So it creates something new, something unexpected, and is visually really interesting. It merges the design and the production process, something that we're seeing um, consistently more highly valued amongst consumers. This idea of, of craft, of make, of uh, wanting the design to reflect the production process. It'll give you a USP, a unique selling point, as a label, a particular type of um, pattern cutting technique um, will give you a USP, something you can sell, something to bring consumers to your product. But lastly, and not, uh, but not leastly, I should say, last but not least, lastly, but not leastly, hmm. last but not least, is actually a really fun process. If you like jigsaw puzzles, if you like putting things together, you'll love this process. It's a way of kind of slotting things together so they sit neatly and fit nicely. It's intellectually rigorous and challenging. So who are the key zero waste pattern cutters out in the world? I'm going to give you a list in a second, um, and we're going to go through each one. So don't feel like you've got to write the whole list down. Um, if you ask me, send me a message, I will shoot you out the PowerPoint and I'll have all the links to their website, in it, but you could just Google them. So here are some of the main drivers of the process. We've got Holly McQuillan, we've got Yali Tang, we've got uh, Alice Sutton, we've got Kat George, we've got all these different people. So let's start first with Holly McQuillan. So we're going to discuss how they do it in a very brief way, but then look at the work and walk our way through it. So Holly's approach, or at least Holly's initial approach to uh, designing zero waste. Now, I would encourage you to look at her new PhD work. It's an exceptionally exciting uh, design, exceptionally exciting production, groundbreaking, literally groundbreaking thinking in terms of fashion production and technology and zero waste production um, in her current work. And you can find it all on her website. But we're going to go right back to the beginning and have a look at um, her first roots in zero waste pattern cutting. So Holly decides on the type of garment or garment she'd like to develop, and that's really the beginning of the process. So, okay, I'm making a top. All right, so what does the top need? All right, might need two sleeves, might need a front, might need a back. Okay, what do they kind of look like? And then she works from there. So that kind of works a bit like um, the way a sculptor might work with the base materials and then working on from there. So we can see in this work from 2009, you know, a thousand years ago, that we're starting to see shapes differ, right? So the way we're cutting things like the hood here, and you can see our, um, our lay plan here, and I'll have a closer look at that, but we're creating garments like this. Okay, so here is our coat, and let's start to look here. These are things nicely labeled. So we have our collar, which kind of looks like a collar shape. This is a dart here, front and back extension, front insert, okay. So here's the second sleeve front, second sleeve back, but we can see mirrored with the first sleeve front and the first sleeve back. Now this plays, I would say, that the grain line would run this way on this garment, and it means that you need to really start to think about how you place your, your fabric. So for example, we need to know that our front, our one sleeve and our second sleeve, well, they're going to look different. And is that a deliberate thing? Is it a non-deliberate thing? How do you balance that out? This is another um, product that um, Holly made called Twin Sets, and this is about 2010. Um, and you can see it's exploring two garments here. So um, uh, trousers and a top. So we can see like t-shirt, hoodie, sleeves, body, trout pants here. You can see trousers and facings and a collar. So mixing items of more than one garment into a lay plan. Now this is a single piece of fabric, um, but multiple pieces of garments have been have been placed on there. Okay. Now what Holly has done here is colored these um, pattern pieces to give her a better idea of, of, of what they look like, to be able to tell them apart from each other. You can see here we go. Here's our dress, vest, dress, you know, pants. You can see all these little bits, dress body. And so if after looking at these initial images and thinking, oh, they kind of look a bit, you know, like Rorschach test here. These these look, it looks a bit like a Mickey Mouse's ears there, something like that maybe. Okay, well, let's start to look at how we turn them into a digital print. So this is a skull and this is a, a uh, you know, a face. I believe this is a sheep skull and this is a wolf's, a wolf's face. But you can see how these pattern pieces start to mimic the imagery. And here we go, wolf sheep, and you can see there the eye, there the eyes there. Again, two thousand and nine, and here is our uh, here is one of the lay plans without the print. 
So you can see we still have our hood, we've got our shoulder inserts, all that kind of stuff, but you can see they don't look like what we'd consider a regular pattern piece to look like. So it's important to recognize that that is going to happen. And so it takes a bit of time to practice, and, and I would say that the easiest way to practice would be in paper. You know, create yourself a piece of paper that is a scaled down version of your fabric, um, same with your patterns, and go from there. Now, what McQuillan found was that actually she could start to exploit this approach. So you can see we have war and peace here. So looking at the shapes of the letters and the shapes that they create and how they could be used as pattern pieces. And here are those garments from 2010. And you can see they have, I mean, they're beautiful garments and they have very distinctive um, aesthetics. The next person we're going to talk to you about is uh, a finished Finnish designer, sorry, finished, sorry, Finnish from Finland, designer called Timo Rissanen. Now, Timo explores the notions of use, waste, ownership, and heirlooms. And this idea that uh, as we use objects, as we kind of hold them to them, use them for alternative things, do they gain more value? Now, that pathway leads you to think about waste in a different way, that actually waste is... Um, is a, is a valuable resource, something worth holding on to, not something worth throwing away. So every stitch becomes precious, every piece of fabric becomes precious. And we can see here a pair of uh, trousers, like a pajama set here, a pair of trousers and a top, made out of um, a set of sheets. You can see like the sheets have been repaired prior to the production of these trousers. But if we take another look at it again here, see we've got square sleeves, so that's one sleeve, and I think that's the half of the other sleeves. There's our collar, you can see our collar running around here. There's the body of the garment, a little peplum there, neck gusset to the back, and here are our trousers. So, okay, gusset, legs, waistband, waistband, and pocket. So wrapping around the legs, you can see the gusset sitting there. And some more um, work from Rissen in here. So you can see very geometric, different to Holly's work, lots of squares, but using uh, woven fabrics draped around the body. And again, uh, the endurance shirt. But you can see there are lots of little pieces. We take a look at them together. So A, there's our body. But um, there'll be t tucks and uh, darts in there as well. Not darts necessarily, but tucks to give us that shape. The next project we're going to discuss is a New Zealand-based project, which Holly McQuillan was part of, along with um, Jennifer Witty and, and uh, a range of other designers, called Make Use. Now, Make Use explores what might occur if we consider not only the aesthetic of the garments we wear, but also the way we use them and the waste they create when we make them. So the approach to Make Use was about um, really reduction in waste overall. So how could we use um, you know, pattern pieces in different ways? How could we create basically a kind of vocabulary of techniques, a, an alphabet of techniques that we could use in a range of different ways? So we can see here, we've got our cropped t-shirt, our long shirt, and our long coat, and they're all the same pattern. So let's start here. This is our uh, um, cropped t-shirt. It is longer, and now it is a long t-shirt. We have a cut down the middle of it, and it is longer, and now it is a uh, long coat. Very, very simple stuff. But you can see things like these stitch lines or these prints here, and it's a way to change the neckline. So you either cut the neckline or you don't, you cut it wider or you don't, and you create a different aesthetic. And again here, the tube dress, wrap skirt, and wrap dress. The wrap dress and the wrap skirt are um, very similar, using similar foundations. And now let's take a look at Yao Li Tang. So Yao Li Tang approaches the client, first of all, and looks at their needs as a central part of the design process. Now, if we think about that in the broader design context, we, context, we might call that participatory design or user-centered design. Uh, and this idea that the person who's owning, wearing, using the clothes becomes the most important part of the design process. Now, I would say that should be central to every designer's work. Uh, it's not necessarily the way, um, but let's take a look. So we can see here that these aren't dramatic garments. They're fairly standard garments, and we can see they're very cylindrical. Um, things like this dress, these trousers and this coat 
that they're, they're fairly cylindrical in the sense that they're primarily based on rectangles and cylinders, but they're very wearable, very versatile garments. So very much able to slot into an existing wardrobe. Let's take a look at Lela Jacobs. So uh, one of the things that are interesting about her work is that uh, her process is folding and cutting into cloth rather than cutting out. So the idea of um, production process, uh, the, tr the, the production process as we see it now is to take a pattern, place it on a piece of fabric and cut it out and then use the bit you cut out to uh, make the garments. Now what we're saying here is that we're folding the cloth and making cuts into the cloth uh, in order to create the spaces. So we can see here that we have lots of um, uh, drape. The garment is worn around the body, not through the body like we would see in traditional clothing. And it's a different way of approaching pattern cutting. So more kind of freehand, more artistic, more, um, this is called, you know, the situationist, um, which is more, which is based on art movements, that idea of kind of creating something in the moment. So more free form than we might see from other zero waste pattern cutters. Uh, Julia Lumsden looks at CAD, especially using Gerber. So Gerber is a, a CAD, stands for Computer Aided Design, and Gerber is a piece of software used in the fashion industry for pattern cutting. So it's basically di a digital pattern cutting piece of software, um, which is great because it can help you get really, really, really efficient lays and all those kinds of things. But she's uh, hacking the software, I suppose, to produce zero waste um, products, which means that she's creating lay plans digitally with no waste, which is a really exciting thing. Now she's making reference to traditional tailored garments, which have lots of triangles and rectangles in them. Um, so that lends itself really well to zero waste pattern cutting. And we can see here um, those kinds of works. Now again, these don't look too dissimilar to standard garments, but there are nods here, things like this little kick out here, the way that this seaming is uh, produced here and this seaming is produced here. Um, suggest that this is, oh, this is lovely, this little seam down here, suggests that this is not traditional pattern cutting. So we can see from this lay plan, um, we can, the head would come out this area here, so you'd stitch along this line, you, know, you cut along this line here, I should say, uh, and this would fold back, becoming a facing, a back facing, a back neck facing. Here are our arm holes here, our sleeves. Yeah, so we can see real nods to traditional shirt making, um, whilst keeping uh, an aesthetic difference. Let's take a look at uh, Maha Stabil. So uh, Maha explores geometry uh, with triangles and rectangles. So you'll see a lot of this in uh, zero-waste pattern cutting, but wrapping the rectangle around the body dictates the aesthetic. So if you think of that idea of like wrapping, wrapping a ribbon around your finger, um, we're wrapping effectively a, a rectangle around our finger and it creates, well, it works fine, creates that kind of spiral shape. So spirals are used a lot in zero-waste pattern cutting, especially for things like trousers. Um, but you can see from her work that these are literally a series of rectangles um, sewn together. And the drape has an impact. You know, we have these big kind of utility pockets, loose aesthetic, kind of um, very unstructured aesthetic while still being structural shapes. And this is Australian designer Alice Sutton, who uses place to inform her pattern aesthetic. So she might, for example, look at a piece of fabric uh, as if we were to look at a map and pr place a pin in an area that might mark a location and then draw a line from there to a, a pin that might mark another location and that might form part of the pattern. Uh, Alice uses a lot of jersey, um, which gives her, gives her aesthetic a lot of drape and fluidity. And we can see here from this work from from a few years ago, that we have, uh, again, you can see they're very rectangular garments, but because of the jersey, or because of the lack of jersey, it's the central one, um, we either have lots of drape or we have lots of structure. And these are the, all these things working together. The way that uh, pattern cutting is explored, the way that fabric is used, and the um, foundation of that pattern cutting system all have an impact on the aesthetic. So you can see, unlike traditional garment production, where we might draw a picture of a garment and try and recreate that picture in fabric, zero waste pattern cutting requires us to use the fabric uh, and use the pattern cutting technique as a design process, as part of the design process, part, as a design technique to create that aesthetic outcome. And last but not least is um, Bristol-based uh, designer, 
Cat George, who's a USW graduate from 2019, which is wonderful for us, uh, and owner of the label Low K. Now, Cat uses a folding technique and square geometry to explore tr the intersection between traditional construction models and zero waste production. So, uh, the way that she explores these garments, as you can see really easily here, so this, um, so this should be a big rectangle, but she's folded areas back to create her shapes. You can see the same here, and here, and on the utility vest. So, when we look at something like um, utility vest, this is our traditional pattern. The garment, the pattern cutting is produced, so we end up with like a, a vest shape that's fit into uh, rectangles, and then the rectangles are folded back. So you see the same from our trousers here. And this is um, her technical drawings of the final garment. So you can see what the exciting stuff about Cat's work is that they grow and shrink. So for example, uh, a smaller size on this hoodie might have larger triangles. A larger size might have smaller triangles because more fabric is needed to cover the body. So she's created a really unique and exciting system um, that grows and changes with the body. Thank you very much, Jochen Vauer. Um, if you're really excited about this kind of stuff, you can subscribe to this channel or any of the other USW channels. There's plenty out there. Uh, and talk to you soon.